Hey, we appreciate you stopping in for another episode of Pit the Plate. Today's episode, we're, we're talking ribs, all things ribs. That's one thing that everybody asks all the time. Hey, what's your rib method? How do you cook ribs? Ribs are one of those things that just screams, hey, backyard barbecue, springtime, summertime. Anybody cooking outside, they're usually associating it with cooking ribs. So today, we're cooking ribs, and we're going to show you our method and uh, what makes them so delicious and what makes them sell out so quick here at the restaurant and at our house. So uh, come on, let's get going. Use is we use St. Louis spares. We love this. They're meaty ribs. They are. Uh, they're, they just cook well. You, know, you got a lot of meat, not a lot of fat. They these are Duroc ribs. We we always cook high quality ribs here at the restaurant and at home. You can't beat it. Um, they're just they're just so good. So we're gonna get started. The first thing you got to do with your ribs is you got to prep ribs to get them on the grill. And uh, the first thing we do is we gotta pull that membrane off the back. A lot of people don't do it, and hey, you know what, there, there's there's multiple different ways that you can do it, and a lot of people say it works fine without doing it, which is fine, and uh, can't really tell the difference. We can tell the difference. We like we like having the, the, the membrane pull, get the, get the uh, rub into the back of it as well, and uh, the easiest way to do it is with a paper towel or a towel like I'm doing here. And they just pull right back, right off the back, just like that. Can't beat that. Um, another thing I like to do is this end cut right here. You got a, you got just a little bone sticking off. So I, I I'm not gonna cook what we're not gonna eat. You know, I like to square them up, make them look a little prettier. Same thing over here. Got a little extra, extra meat hanging off. So we're gonna just trim that up, square up these these racks a little bit, make them look a little prettier. I don't know. I don't, most people eat with their eyes first, so we're always constantly, constantly wanting to do good presentation on, on everything we cook at home and at the restaurant. So that rack's done. Let me flip it over. It's done on the back. So right here you got this little this little piece of the loin. We're gonna take take this off because you want it to cook evenly. And you want the, the rack to be even all the way across. We're gonna take that off. You got just a little bit of fat that'll render off as you cook it. Hey guys, so we've got our ribs prepped. We've pulled the membranes. We've trimmed them up. We've trimmed up the edges. We've got any extra hanging meat, any thicker sides of the meat trimmed off of them. Now we're going to season them up. So uh, we're always, we always use our Sweet Uncle T's rib rub. It is by far one of the best rib rubs out there. A lot of competition teams are using them nowadays, using the same rub for their competition. So we don't, we don't go really heavy on the backside. But we do like to get it a good coat, um, lighter coat on the back side. Then we go down the edges. I'm a firm believer in coating all, all the sides, of, all the edges, front, back, on, on all the meat that we, we cook. So the top, ed, the top side of the ribs, we're going to do a little heavier coat. So a crucial step in cooking ribs, in any meat, is once you season them, you gotta let them sit. You gotta let that, you gotta let them get that moisture, get get start sweating and, and getting the, uh, once it starts sweating, it's drawing the, the seasoning down into the meat. So you wanna let it sit for, for a good 15, 20 minutes before you hit the grill. So we're gonna let these rest. Our grill's gonna get up to temp. It's uh, We're gonna roll about 250 on our grill. That's the way, that's our sweet spot for cooking ribs. No matter if it's a pellet grill, Kamado, a stick burner, 250 is a good range for cooking ribs. And uh, so we've got a little bit of oak wood in there along with our uh, lump charcoal. So uh, we look forward to these going on there. They're gonna cook for probably, I don't know, about three, three and a half hours total cook time. Um, but stay tuned, we're gonna get them on here in just a minute. Hey, welcome back. They've been sitting for probably about 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Uh, as you can see, they're starting to get a good glistening to them, where they're starting to sweat and absorb some of that, some of that goodness of the rub into them. So we're gonna go ahead and get them on the grill. We got our Kamado Joe rolling about 250 with some oak wood chunks in there. We got it set up indirect with our uh, with our half moon um, heat deflectors in there, and we're gonna get these on.
And these are going to go for about two hours. We're going to just close it up, let them roll for about two hours. We're going to come back and check them in a couple hours, see where they are. Going to do a little bend test on them. Going to do going to do some probing to see how tender they are and then we're going to wrap them up and we're going to show you our secrets to how we wrap ribs and put them back on and finish them off so stay tuned hey what's going on everybody so as you can tell by the the light outside it's been uh, about two a little over two and a half about two and a half hours i start checking mine about two but um i want to show you a little trick about checking your ribs to know when they're ready to wrap so as you can tell we're getting good color on them They've been on there for about two and a half hours, but I want to do a bend test. I want to see if they're going to bend up, and I'm just feeling for resistance in them. And um, as you can tell, that one's bending really good. The other one's almost there. Looking at it, it just flops right over, so it's getting closer. We're going to go ahead and wrap these ribs up and put them back on. So our method of wrapping is um, a little bit of brown sugar. Of course, everybody, just about everybody uses brown sugar nowadays on their ribs when they wrap. A little bit of difference that we do is we use butcher paper and not foil. Um, I like the butcher paper aspect because it lets the ribs breathe. And your your rub will stay kind of that kind of that um, texture of the rub will stay on there and all. So we we're doing brown sugar, butter, unsalted butter, and we're just a little bit of our peach sauce on there. We're flipping them over. I'm gonna do the same thing on the back side of them. A little brown sugar, a little butter, and a little bit of our sweet Georgia peach. So we're wrapping these, these up to go back on the smoker for probably another 45 minutes to an hour or so. And the way I put them back on is, I put them back on meat side down so you want the bones up when you put them back on so they're in they're on they're uh they're meat side down again we did like a bend test on them so you can see these these are bending not they're starting to bend they're pulling just a little bit just like it just like the other rack is we're gonna go ahead and wrap these all right we're back as you can see i got my my right hand man right here miles what do you say to everybody hey hey that's right hey so ribs have been wrapped for right at about 45 minutes or so, and we're gonna check them to see if they're ready to be unwrapped and back on. So one thing we look for with ribs, and, and kind of like how we did it to see if they were ready to wrap, we're gonna do a bend test. As you can see, these are these are bending real easy. Another good way to do it is to take a, is take a thermometer and just check them. There shouldn't be any resistance going in into the meat. It should be just like just like going into a into some butter. So um, as you can see, they're both ready to ready to be unwrapped. Oh man, look at those. Look at the pullback we got on the rib bones right there. Just the, they're just ready to fall apart. Look at that color on those. They're ready to get eaten. They're almost ready to get eaten, you're right. So look, they're, they're, they're right there. We're gonna put them right back on for just a minute. Hey, what's up everybody, we're back. Hey, my helper Miles is still here giggling a little bit and all, but uh, having a great time. We just finished up the ribs. We're pulling them off the, off the Kamado Joe right now. Um, can't wait to show y'all. These look amazing. You can tell it's getting later in the evening, so the lighting is not that great, but I'm gonna pull these off. Lay these up here for everybody to see. Always, always, when you pull meat off the smoker, you gotta let it rest. So we're gonna let these rest for about another five, 10 minutes. We're gonna get them sliced up and plated up for y'all. But uh, amazing cook, super easy. We don't do anything. We don't have any hidden magic dust that we put on them. It's straight, these two products right here, a little brown sugar, some butter and love. And um, as you can see, they're super, super tender. The color on them's amazing. Bones are pulling back. A lot of people say, hey, if, you're if your bones are pulling back like that, you're cooking them too hot. I like it. I, I think it looks great. Hey, as you can see, Miles is already chowing down on them. But we went ahead and sliced all the ribs up. I plated them up with some of our homemade potato salad. 
and house made pickles. There's nothing that goes better with some ribs on a spring day like today than, than some homemade potato salad and our pickles. Again, we really appreciate you tuning in. See you next time. Hey, we really appreciate you stopping by for another episode of Hit the Plate. If y'all like what we're doing, you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button down below. There's also a link for all the products and the recipes that we do on, on all our videos. And you can always find us on social media at 441 South. Thanks again and have a great day.